you're in the middle of the forest all by yourself. Oh, you want some answers? I got some answers. <laughs> okay, taking a quick breather here from hauling on this hog all day. She's a hell of a hog. We've been hauling on her. Did I mention we're hauling on the hog? Quick machine check, okay? This is like an 03 you like. You like this bike? That's right. 50 cc's, road legal. She's geared optimally. I had this bad boy at 75k this morning. Just hauling. Four strokes, it's about all I last for anyways. Fresh tire in the rear, not for long. <laughs> Sweet unit. Anyways, so we had somebody ask about when the next merch drop is gonna be. So we have hats being made right now. So in the next couple weeks, we're gonna have hats. Uh, three different styles, breathable trucker hat styles, which has been highly requested. Obviously in the fall too, or maybe even before then, we're gonna go back to a classic uh, green brim fitted snapback style. Um, hats are in the works. We're gonna make more of these as well as restock on some of our more popular uh, older designs like the Marlboro T, etc. So you guys will stay tuned for that, but that'll all be happening over the next month, two months, etc. But the next thing on the chopping block is hats. So you guys will see those soon. We had another question. How do you add or take away mechanical grip? You could get pretty uh, in depth with this one and still something that I am admittedly still learning how to um, optimize in different settings. Basic answer I would say would be um, experimenting with your suspension setup in terms of dampening um, forces that are being pushed through the tire, pushing the car into the ground. So. I would say if you're kind of just wanting to start experimenting with that, um, playing with spring rates and suspension setup in order to improve mechanical grip would be the most basic way to start. Um, if you're looking for a more in-depth answer, honestly, I would say go to FDF Race Shops YouTube. Josiah has a whole video on how to add or uh, you know increase mechanical grip and different ways that you can do that. We're not going to get into that here. He knows more about that than I do. so. Um, that's his wheelhouse, but my basic answer is start playing with dampening. Okay, so we had another question about um, how do different alignment setups affect the car in drifting. So, I can get a little closer to the camera. Some noise going on. Um, generally speaking, once again, this is like a kind of a question you can get pretty deep into with Ackerman and whatnot, but I'm assuming most people that are asking this are kind of looking for a basic answer. So, starting at the front of the car, generally I recommend like a little bit of toe out, depends on the chassis. A little bit of toe out in the front, what it does is it's going to make your, um, like for doing a feint initiation, you're going to have more response from the steering wheel. It's going to allow you to kind of like get a more aggressive turn in um, for initiation. Some guys run neutral, like zero toe in the front too. It's not super common to ro run toe in in the front. I personally wouldn't recommend it. Um, so yeah, I would say zero or slight toe out is going to, you're going to feel a difference in the um, aggressiveness and the turn in on initiation for like a feint or something like that with toe in in the front. Uh, in the rear, toe in is obviously gonna give you more grip, but like everything, it's like to a certain extent. Um, so, you know, neutral at zero or slightly starting to toe in is how you would just improve grip on your chassis. Um, camber, there's lots of theories on this too. Um, in the rear, I, I think the camber amount that you have depends on your shock, preload, your spring rate, the tire size, um, many factors, but also I think once again for like a basic answer, like if you have a lower power car, um, you're probably not producing enough power to make the car squat too much. Um, once again, chassis dependent. So you basically just want to be at a point in the rear with your camber where you have a full contact patch. Um, you want good even tire wear. So whatever that is for you and your chassis, um, if you do a few laps and you notice that you know half your tire is wearing, you want to achieve zero toe uh, while in drift, right? Sometimes it doesn't always equate to having zero toe static when you're just sitting. For example, in a lot of comp cars, uh, if you just watch them rolling through the pits, when they're rolling through the pits, they have 
um, actually positive camber. And that's because when the car squats in drift, the idea is that that compression levels that tire out. And then in drift, there's a zero contact patch up front. Lots of people have different theories on like what toe number or uh, what camber number you need based on what kit and what chassis. Um, obviously people have figured that out. For me, I kind of run a baseline and what I do is I just put the wheel to like roughly 60 to 70 degrees of what the maximum lock is. And if you can achieve zero camber, a flat tire patch um, at that point, because that's where you're gonna be spending most of your time realistically in drift is that that's 60 to 70% of lock, whatever it's capable of, that's how I align my cars. So if I can achieve zero left and right at the same point roughly, um, that's where I'm gonna be spending most of my time. So that's gonna vary depending on what kit you have, what chassis and other specs in your car. Um, we won't get into Ackerman, um, mainly because I don't feel comfortable explaining that to you guys, but that's toe and camber. Liam, the next question is, who's your favorite drifter, past or present? Any more than three shakes and you're playing with yourself, you know what they say. <laughs> who's my favorite drifter, past or present? Buddy, you're looking at him. Don't be fooled. <laughs> Remember the name. All right, we got another question about uh, tread wear and tires for beginner, intermediate, and advanced drifters. Um, I have mixed feelings about this one. When I learned, I learned without a hydro, and I learned to drive fast in a very slow car. So I feel like learning with a situation where you have to break the car loose and make a grippier setup could be advantageous. But what I want to say is like when you're learning, um, your priority should be getting as much seat time as possible for the lowest cost as possible. And typically speaking, that's going to be from a higher tread wear tire. Um, obviously that depends on the quality of the tire. Some cheap Chinese tires sometimes tend to just disintegrate. So yeah, if you're learning, I would say uh, a higher tread wear tire is going to be more advantageous for you in terms of getting more laps per dollar and having a more predictable, smooth, easier car to break out. Um, and then I think, you know, the intermediate advanced thing, it's kind of a gray area because it just really depends on what kind of car you're driving, what your goal is for that day and your goal with that car. In a competition car, you want a gripped up car, you want to be able to drive as fast as possible within reason without sacrificing anything else. So on the comp car, you're gonna run a grippy tire. If, you have a, if you're an advanced driver with a high power car, but you're going to a fun day, you're probably gonna run a looser setup so you can jam with your boys, not worry about trying to gap people or leave people behind, uh, and just focusing on having a fluid, you know, smooth line and be able to party with everybody. So I think once you're, once you're a good enough driver, you're at a point where you know you can drift, you know, comfortably, then depending on what your goal is for that event or that day, that's when you start experimenting with grippier tires with lower tread wear. I don't necessarily think it's related to being an intermediate or an advanced or beginner. Um, although, like I said, I do think beginners, that's a good starting point. But after that, I think it doesn't really matter. Next question is, um, what is the most why the fuck am I doing this moment you've had in your motorsports journey so far, Mr. Liam Fancy Pants? <laughs> um, I think my journey has like been pretty short so far, but there's definitely been a lot of like uh, big decisions. I think one that stands out for me is probably just like Every decision I've made to this point has been to put myself in a position to be as successful as possible to try and build a business and put myself in a position where I can afford to go racing. And um, because of that, every like career decision that I've made has been a invest the time now, it'll pay off later scenario. And so I guess what comes to mind recently is the career decision that I made was to put myself in a position where I'm essentially self-employed and 100% uh, commission, like that's what I do, sales for my main source of income. And uh, there's a year and a half of doing that um, was definitely tough because you have to build your clientele. There's some things that happen that are out of my control and it's 100% commission. Um, so when you're not selling and when things are, you know, economic factors, industry, you know, 
factors and trends and other things that were happening uh, affected my ability to like make money. Um, everything got put on hold. So the comp car got put on hold and everything else. So it was like a lot of upfront work and sacrifice that had to be made in order to try and put myself in a position where I have freedom over my own schedule so that we can go racing and I can build my business, which is Slip Club and all the stuff that surrounds that. But uh, man, it was a brutal, brutal year and a half um, in many ways. So you have these moments where like friends are getting houses and mortgages and down payments and other aspects of life. And you definitely ask yourself like, you know, why am I doing this? But obviously that lasts for about 0.2 seconds because I know why I'm doing this. So I know it's gonna be worth it and it's all gonna pay off. But sometimes it's definitely human nature to have those moments. Um, and like ask yourself and question those things, but you gotta stay on the path and it's already starting to pay off. Uh, we're through like the other side of the tunnel, so to speak. So it's all up from here. But yeah, I mean, you're never gonna have a good story without those moments. And I know there's uh, certainly more to come too. You know, when we start competing at a higher level and whatnot, we're just gonna reface all those hurdles again, being a privateer, coming from where we come from. Um, there's a lot of extra things that we need to deal with, but what do you do? You just gotta deal with them, so. That's my most recent, why the fuck am I doing this moment? It was basically the last whole year and a half. <laughs> but it'll pay off. So, yeah, there you go, fancy pants. The next question, very important one, was what is your favorite red LS swapped E46 with the same intake as you? I would have to say it's tough, but it's probably my dude Pat Sweever's car. Tough, tough call but I think he's got my favorite red LS Swap E46 with the same intake as me. <laughs> Stoked to jam with you, dude. All right, next question is, um, somebody asked, how do I see drifting in Canada in the next five years? And then like more specifically, big comps, et cetera, drifting in Ontario and Quebec. Um, I don't, I think, uh, I mean, drifting is obviously a sport that's growing very fast and has been on that trajectory for quite a while now. Um, like many things, it blows up in the U.S. and then it kind of trickles over to Canada. Obviously, our market is so much smaller. Um, that's never going to change uh, drastically. So it's always going to be a scaled down scene of what's happening in the U.S. But with that being said, obviously, first of all, drifting in Quebec has been huge for a very long time. DMCC, they do a fantastic job doing their competitions. It's very high level. I've always said that. Some fantastic drivers coming out of DMCC. So I think drifting in Quebec is very strong presence is strong the community the support that's not going to change um what i think would be cool and it's starting to happen now is having quebec and ontario come together um because personally i think in terms of competition drifting at least uh ontario is kind of always lagged behind quebec we've, we've never had a series in ontario like dmcc period it's never happened the ontario guys are always going to quebec or obviously going to the states um there's some local series now, CDS is one of them. I love what they're trying to do and achieve. Hopefully they can get to that point and, have, and you know achieve their goal of what they wanna do because that would just be better for Ontario as well. Um, so I think Ontario is growing. I think the scene is growing in Ontario and I think it's starting to finally trend back in the right direction because for a long time there, I thought personally that the idea and mentality of what drifting should be like was not beneficial for the sports image, which was holding us back from getting a lot of the good venues that we're now starting to get at least some, in some cases, access to, but also now getting some attention from that. At the end of the day, whether we like it or not, drifting in motorsports is a business and it has to be viewed that way if you want it to grow. And if you want more opportunities to drift at higher quality tracks with higher quality drivers and cars, then you need to understand that's a business case. I know there's a lot of like grassroots mentality that, that kind of pushes against that. And trust me, I get it. I've been on the other side of the fence, but I think Ontario drifting, Quebec drifting, Canadian drifting is on a good trajectory. And it's been awesome to see once again, as of recently, which a bunch of people at the LZ World Tour and events like that, local guys, either going to the States or having events like that come here. And now local talent is mingling with some of the talent in the US because we definitely have a lot of really good drivers here and we got a lot to offer. So I think it's only going up from here. And uh, obviously we're planning on being a, a bigger part of that than we have been. So I think it's on the right path for sure. All right, we got asked, what is your favorite track of all time and why? Well, I'm probably not the best person to ask because once again, we're pretty early in our drifting career here. I've been fortunate enough to go to a lot of tracks. I've been to Road Atlanta and a bunch of tracks in the States. 
but I'm just going to talk about tracks I've personally driven because I haven't driven those personally yet. So let's just talk about tracks in Ontario, which isn't a huge pool to pick from, but everybody knows OG Shannonville layout with turn zero um, and the back track. Um, man, that track, if you drive it properly, especially in a slower car, it's a ball tester. And I think that's why a lot of people who cut their teeth at Shannonville are still good drivers to this day. And they're very confident at high speeds because, you know, Shannonville is a fast track. Um, yeah, sure, there's not a ton of elevation change, etc. although there is a little bit of elevation change on the full track layout. Um, there is the opportunity to drive very fast on the full track layout if you are capable of doing that. And that's how, how I learned and I love that. And hopefully that's going to be coming back thanks to FDF and the guys running those events. So we'll see. But that's my favorite track to drive. It just brings back a lot of memories, a lot of nostalgia there. And there's nothing like clicking that turn zero all the way into turn one. Um, especially if you have a car that can do it in one link. We can maybe cut to a video here possibly if we can find it. I think I have it on my laptop of that exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that section's awesome. The next question that I'm going to answer was from LSX Ontario. First thing he, he wanted to ask was if we can do a collab and the answer is definitely yes. So hit me up my man, we will figure it out. When the comp car is done, um, we can make something happen. I think it's sweet that you're trying to do what you're doing. I think everybody would love something like LSS or LS Fest or LSX Fest in uh, Ontario. It'd be super rad. I think we definitely have enough people to make it happen so i definitely support that and then that ties into your second question which is can you get a ride in the comp car when it's done ls power exclamation mark um definitely dude we'll figure it out come see us at an event uh, when we're testing it once that's done like whatever you want we can make it happen we can we can even tie that into our collab if you want post on social media whatever you want hit me up we'll make it happen So it's setup tips slash how to get into tandems with new people you don't really know. Setup tip wise, it's gonna be somewhat chassis dependent, but I think generally speaking, if you're new to drifting, I think it's important in front and rear to probably start at a baseline of zero toe in the front and probably zero toe in the rear. If you find that your chassis maybe doesn't have a lot of forward bite, if that's something that, I'm assuming this person's new, maybe they're not new, I'm assuming they're fairly new. If you find that your chassis doesn't have a lot of forward bite, one of the easier ways to, to fix that is put a little bit of toe in in the rear, um, maybe a sixteenth of an inch per side to start with. But I would say keep your toe kind of neutral, make sure you have a good alignment, make sure that you have coilovers, of course, uh, bucket seat, welded diff, make sure that aspect of your car is set up well, make sure your dampening is adjusted correctly. Most cars that I get in, if it's like a relatively stock car with just coilovers that are like, I'm assuming they're just like kind of like a one-way adjustable and not like some crazy, you know, three-way stuff. Um, I usually try and like baseline set the front at like medium adjustability, somewhere in the middle range. And then usually in the rear, I, I personally start a little bit on the softer side, but that's going to depend on your spring rate and preload and whatnot. But um, I would say start with, a, you know, a neutral toe, start with a somewhat medium setting in the front for sh shock dampening, somewhat softer in the rear. If you have a sway bar, that's cool. Definitely encourage uh, experimenting by disconnecting the rear sway bar here and there. So I would just say overall, make sure alignment and setup is good. Assuming that's good um, in terms of getting into tandem with new people, uh, first and foremost, always ask. Don't just jump into a tandem train with somebody on track or don't just creep up on somebody. Good tandems require good planning. If you really value your seat time and you want to get good seat time with with people and make every lap count which should always be the goal is always progressing making every like session count 
um, plan out your tandem, say, hey, here's where we're gonna start drifting, here's where we're gonna stop drifting, here's where we're gonna switch lead and chase. Um, so that's really important. And uh, if you're just learning tandems, following somebody that you can trust is really important and just keeping a bit of distance and watching how a car transitions and then asking yourself, you know, am I ready to get closer? And when you watch another car that's maybe of a higher skill level than you, you're gonna see how that car behaves, you're gonna see the line that they're running. Um, and then, you know, the hydro is a tool, it should not be overused. Uh, so I don't wanna encourage overusing the hydro, but once you start getting close enough, you can use that hydro to kind of uh, achieve the distance you want a lot of people do left foot braking as well but it's also a good save you know if you feel that you dive in a little too hard and you're still new to it don't be afraid to use that hydro um, check up some speed you don't want to be ramming into people right away but yeah so I would say always ask to tandem always plan your tandems if you're in the lead you want to make sure that you're running the proper lead line you know it's the oldest saying in drifting there's no good chase without a good lead so wherever track you're at, make sure that you establish what the proper lead line is and you want to do your best to run the best lead line that you can to give the chase car the best opportunity to have a good chase behind you. And then you also hope that that will be reciprocated for you as well. So those are my tandem tips. I know this person already knows the answer to this. All right. So you know who you are. So my dude asked, why are your muscles all show no go? It's up. You know what? you know whether they're all show or no go, all right, buddy? And so does so do somebody else that you know really well. Think about that. What was the second question again? Uh, when's the Firebird gonna be done? Oh, okay, a serious note. The Firebird's almost done. Um, I know I told you guys on YouTube that we are gonna do kind of more in-depth videos in that. Man, we've been jamming. That's 100% my fault for not uh, keeping you guys up to the loop with that. But the Firebird is almost done, and before it goes to Fab Mac to get wired up, and um, Dynode, we're gonna do a little bit of a build breakdown on it. So that'll happen in the next uh, week or so. So the Firebird's almost done. You know who you are. A sturgeon. No, <laughs> the brother. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Dory Zero, my dude Vince asked, why are you guys so awesome? First of all, Vince, you are the man. Vince is doing some really cool stuff. If you guys don't follow what Vince is doing, Dory Zero is his, uh, his personal Instagram. He's uh, running a car group as well. They're doing car shows and stuff like that. So they just hosted one recently. It was fairly successful from what I heard. And he's just an all around positive dude who understands what's important in car community. And he's got a really rad 86 Corolla. So definitely check out what Vince is doing and his whole team and his crew. But uh, Vince, my man, we're just doing what we want to do. We're trying to create cool stuff for you guys uh, with Slip Club, trying to have a little bit of fun with this, even though, you know, um, it's a dollar in a dream situation. We're like slaving ourselves to make all this happen. You gotta have fun along the way. So that's what we're doing. And I'm glad that you love everything that we're doing. You've been supporting us since day one. So we're trying to uh, keep it on the straight and narrow in terms of the vision. And uh, if we keep making stuff that people like yourself keep liking, then we're doing something right, man. So appreciate it, dude. And you're awesome. All right, the next question I'm answering is, do you prefer lead or chase? Uh, definitely chase, 110%. Okay, so the next question we got asked is, what series am I gonna be driving in the pro car? So the goal, um, maybe end of this year, but definitely next year, as of right now. There's a critter out there. There'd be a critter out there, brother. Three knocks, a whistle, and a holler. Sam's Clanch is out here, brother. You hear that? Next year, if things go my way, I would love to run Clutch Kickers in Alabama because we got our homie Kaysen in Georgia. So he's only like three-ish hours away from that track. So we can kind of make that happen together. That'd be really rad. I think it's a really cool series and I would love to drive it. So Mid Pond looks really sweet too. He's been driving there recently. So he's had nothing but uh, good things to say about that. So Clutch Kickers. Uh, Lake Erie Pro-Am, any other random kind of like shootout style Pro-Am event would be rad to do. Uh, E-Town Gambler Series, the Gambler would be awesome to run. And then I really want to do some Grid Life stuff um, just because Grid Life is Grid Life and the tracks that they have access to now is so cool. So video game tracks, man. So yeah, Grid Life, Gambler, Clutch Kickers, Lake Erie Speedway, that's the plan for the comp car. I even get a Sam Squanch, dude. <laughs> 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 
That's a big boy. Sup oh, he's fishing TV. He's gone. Sup up fishing TV. He's gone. No, brother. But you saw him. Honestly, that's the better outcome. I did catch a fish, and he let himself off the hook. That's the best outcome. shotguns per year brother <laughs> just doing some quick math you know what they say a shotgun a day keeps the intrusive thoughts away 365 days in a year and we're partying more than that so i don't know you do the math dude blood sweat tears, beers and beers yes sir see you guys in the next video